We're Izzy and Kira. Six months ago, we left our tiny rented London flat for a life on the canals. There's been lots of ups and downs, but we've learned a lot and we're excited to continue this journey by bringing you guys along with us. Join us as we explore the UK waterways and renovate our 62-foot floating home, Lavender Lee. Good afternoon. Hello. Hope you're having a good week. So this week, we have a lot of painting to get through. You've set yourself a bit of an unrealistic goal, haven't you? We have a friend coming to stay at the weekend and I basically just went, right, I've had enough. I'm determined to get this painting done, at least in the saloon. I've set myself that goal. So I've kind of been doing painting for like two days straight and yeah. I'm going a bit insane. I've been working the last couple of days. So I've been helping kind of where I can, but today I've taken the day off so we can just focus. We've done some this morning. Um, I finished off the little feature wall, which um, I'll cut and talk about now. <laughs> It's very dark, isn't it? <laughs> Basically, we went to this random decor shop. They sold Dulux. Du Am I saying that right? Yeah. Dulux paint. I always get confused with Dulux and Durex. <laughs> Easy mistake to make. I think it'll look nice. It's not as dark as it looks. Obviously, there's not much light. Yeah, so uh, a bit undecided about that. But um, I think now it's finished. We'll show you in a second. We think we're happy with it. I think it will look nice in contrast with the particular painting that we're going to put up I'm there. sure some of you probably won't like it. I think it's going to elicit some strong reactions. But the important <laughs> thing is that we like it. So please be kind. Um, <laughs> it was a last minute decision. But yes, we've got a lot of painting to get through. So we thought, why not mix it up? this week rather than just a vlog of us painting so this week instead of just showing you loads of painting content we're going to do a bit of our usual vlog stuff and also answer five things that we really love about boat life and then also five things that we dislike or, or like a little bit less we'll try not to be super negative we get a lot of comments from people who are considering boat life and so i think it's good to be faced with all the facts the brutal <laughs> and the beautiful so then you can make the decision for yourself if this is something that you would like to do um and it will keep me company in my painting journey that never seems to end <laughs> so kira um this is the big reveal is it not so this is our little feature wall the thought process behind this was i thought it would be nice if we had like a little feature wall yeah we thought that it'd be nice to have some more color in here to split up the room because we love color and yeah. we worried that with all white walls it just felt a bit like washed out and a bit a bit, boring. bit boring and not really very us so we went for this dark blue color which we're going to have we're gonna, gonna have, have some other paint. paintings on but we'll have this big painting here I think it will look nice. And then imagine some other things going on, maybe hung. Maybe. Well, you know. Look, we're not 100% sure on it yet, but I think, I think. It's grown on me. It's grown on me as well. So yes, as well, we've done a lot more painting as well since the last time we documented. So finished this bit here and this bit. This big ceiling panel is almost done. And so is this one. We did this last night and I've just started on this bit today. So Izzy. What's one of your favourite things about boat life? Well, it's quite topical, but one thing I would say is that we have the complete ability to make the boat and the space our own, which is something that we just didn't have. I mean, we've only ever lived in rentals and we never really thought as two people who worked in theatre that we'd be able to afford to like own a place to do it ourselves. It's been such an amazing process doing all the renovation, and making all the different choices about what we want in the space, not having a landlord that we have to answer to. All those things are just, just one of many, many things that make living on a boat like really positive. In general, we just both feel really privileged to be able to be in a space that we can call ours, not be paying into the rent trap, which we did for such a long time. So yeah. I forgot to say, apologies if it's kind of loud in the background. Um, we are currently moored opposite a Tesco with a really loud pressure washer and you can just hear it all the time. So apologies if that's in the background. What's one of your favourite things about living on a boat? So uh, weirdly, one of my favourite things is actually kind of the lack of facilities so like i think it's really interesting and i've really enjoyed being aware of your own consumption as a human being being aware of how much water you're using and you know how much electricity you're using and it felt like weirdly freeing being able to like go and getting your water charging up your batteries the sense of accomplishment i get when we have like 
you know, full bins and full toilet and our water tanks nearly empty and like going and like doing all the services. I feel so satisfied and so fulfilled. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so at peace right now. I, I've actually really enjoyed that, which I know sounds a bit weird. Obviously there's negatives that come with that, but I think as a whole, it's been really interesting and really nice to kind of like be in control of my own consumption and yeah, that sort of thing. and I don't think the camera shows it justice but this is the biggest roundest pigeon I've ever seen hey hey pigeon So is what is your next favourite thing about boat life? So my next favourite thing about boat life is how beautiful so much of boat life is. That includes seeing the beautiful nature. We love spotting all the different ducks and geese and swans and coots and moorhens. When you're actually living on the canal, you get to see nature and sites and landmarks from a completely unique perspective so i love that i think within that something that has become like abundantly clear as time's gone on is that how up close you get to see the seasons change so at the moment we're sort of seeing the beginnings of spring so seeing the greenery sort of come back in february we had like the snowdrops and then we had the daffodils and then we see little crocuses at the moment i'm so yeah. excited to see the ducklings yes we're excited to see the ducklings we're very excited to see everything sort of come back to life it's so beautiful <laughs> Kisses that sing with words I never heard before. Lace your strings on budded wings that float me back to shore. I ride this insecure. Keeping score. So Kira, what's your next one? My next one is kind of goes off the back of your one and that's like being able to to be able to change our home's location whenever we want and we've been able to like essentially live in some like incredible locations that we would never be able to afford to otherwise and that's even more true um now that we're about to go into london what are some of your favorite places that you've been able to more so far i really love berkhamstead um i thought it was beautiful i hope that we get to spend some more time there when we come back up we kind of had to rush through that area because of the closure i really liked hemel where the fishery was um and where the was it the fishery cafe it was called yeah. that was lovely we went to some live music there and just like basically you can kind of just more up and like have things on your doorstep if you want to yeah i just think it's amazing and i feel very privileged to be able to to do that we're just taking a little pause in our painting we thought we'd sit down and um answer the last like so what's the fifth thing that we love about boat life we love that we're slowly becoming more and more self-sufficient you were saying that like the most we did when we were living on land was hanging up a photo <laughs> whereas now i'm not saying that we're diy geniuses or anything no. but last week we installed our water pump before we did our laminate flooring ourselves doing the painting things like that um, then various other skills that we've sort of learned Changed along the, the way lights. changing the lights learning basic wiring we're slowly learning more and more things about the engine and hopefully going to be able to try and well we're going to try and service that at mm. some point even things like understanding how our leisure batteries work yeah. and keeping track of them and learning about the best way to care for them i just love being able to like know what i'm doing <laughs> i feel like skills like that are quite rare now unless you're doing it as a profession yeah it's just interesting mm. and i like learning and i i want to be able to know everything about the boat so even if we do have to have someone over to fix something that we can't do. We'll still be able to articulate ourselves on what the issue is, kind of do a bit of the DIY ourselves. Like with our fire, we at least 
like gave everything a go and we tried to do as much as we could before we got someone in to fix it. I feel like we learn something new every week, don't we? Something to do with the boat or we're trying our hand at something else. Um, yeah. So we've decided now that um, because the sun is setting that we want to go and quickly nip and do the services now, but we'll be bringing you along with us. I can't promise that it will be very nice, but we've got to get rid of the bins and the LSAN. You can finally see the towpath once more. It was completely flooded here, I'm sure we- The water levels are still high, but yeah. it's manageable now. Never a fun job as it is. Where's a big strong man when you need one, eh, Kira? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> So it's fast, so it's swept away <laughs> by the water. Be careful, Kira. <laughs> Kira, would you tell me one of your least favourite things about boat life? I mean, I don't think there's really much else to say on that matter. <laughs> I realised my answer from before wasn't particularly expansive. So a little bit more about why this isn't ideal. <laughs> Take a little walk with me. So, you know, they're not ideal for a number of reasons. Number one, they're just a bit gross. There's nothing ideal about, you know, bringing around essentially a bucket of your poo. To be honest, you do get desensitised to it after a while. So that part isn't actually that bad. I think the thing that's more annoying about it is how like inconvenient it is can't just like park up in a really nice spot if you really like the nice spot. Clarify that that is just because we have a cassette toilet. There are there are different types of toilets all with their own political backgrounds. Um, Everyone has very strong opinions about, about what is boat best. toilets. I think eventually we might be getting a compost that might be Kira. Yeah, I think that's the route we're gonna go, but we'll see, we will yeah. see. So Kira's taking the remainder of the bins back to the bins and I'm gonna do some sanding. In the meantime, I wanted to talk about one of the things that I don't like about boat life, especially being a continuous cruiser, is sometimes it's hard when boat things become really time consuming. So obviously you've got the one day every two weeks to move the boat, which I like love most of the time, but if you've been working full time and it's your one day off, you know, in theatre you often work six days a week if you're in show, which means moving on your one day off can sometimes feel like a bit of a task but we found that when we push ourselves to get out of bed and do it that it we, we don't we never regret moving you know cruising has been the favorite thing that we love about the boat but obviously there's lots of other things to do with the boat and renovating the boat that have made it particularly time consuming things going wrong and also like general boat maintenance that you have to do just to keep the boat in a good condition and i don't want to sound like we're complaining about that because we're so lucky to have the boat but what it does mean is that i've had to kind of work my work schedule around that which i can happily do here on the boat because i write and i compose so i can you know do that work kind of around my own schedule and do those longer hours and then take three days off to make sure that the boat is getting the care that it needs and that we can renovate and me and kira can also spend time together because that's really important so yeah there's not all bad things you know to it being a time consuming thing but at times you know when work gets really stressful or where you come down to a real crunch time like for example when um, i was doing work away and then kira was left with the Boat, that can leave quite a lot for one person to do especially when the other person's also having to manage a job but yeah um i think in general it is just life and i do think that me and kira handle it really well i think we are fortunate to be freelancers and have a lot of flexibility in that time so we can take time off between jobs when we can afford to do so and just enjoy boat life and renovation and all the good stuff uh, but yeah i think especially if you're someone who's considering getting a boat i think it's definitely worth considering that factor do you have that time in your life to kind of carve out and dedicate to the boat because because um, no matter if you end up spending 200 grand on a boat, it's still going to present you with problems and things that you have to keep busy with. It's, um, it's the evening, isn't it? We're just about to get ready for bed and you've just called me into the kitchen to, just, <laughs> to have a look at something. It's just a slug on the wall. I don't know how it got there. Monsieur? <laughs> it's 
sir. Can we help you? <laughs> Honestly, I'm too tired for this. You've still got paint in your hand. I need you to leave, please. <laughs> please, please, thank you. Hello, Kira. Are you doing some painting? Yes, I am. Surprise, afternoon. surprise. <laughs> Good afternoon. It is day two of the painting marathon and I'm back to say more things that I don't like about boat life. <laughs> the next thing that I don't like about boat life is the inability to have instant hot water. Now this is something that I actually didn't think would bother me that much but I think especially when our fire broke and I had to do things like washing up and stuff and obviously the water is freezing it just makes you not want to do it it's it's really really hard your hands are like so cold or like you have to boil the kettle obviously to do hot washing up if you want to but I think it's definitely something that like upsets m you more but I think that's because I cook in the relationship and you wash up yeah so I think you're the person who has to come like obviously when I'm showering I'll have organized myself to run the engine but if you're just doing something like the day's washing up or washing up some cups as you go you're always going to be washing your face with cold water it's tough because sometimes as well you do just fancy like jumping in the shower you don't know yeah it, it, that's something that is tricky we are going to get a diesel heater yes which should make life a little bit easier so there's been a bit of change of plan because he was originally meant to help me bring all the stuff to the laundrette which is where i'm off to now but we've just run out of water which i knew was gonna happen because we didn't manage to fill up fully last time because the hose was so slow but we've just run out and we don't want to lose this spot so he's gonna fill up some bottles and just keep filling up the water tank so at least last us the weekend while we've got a guest over so as there often is on lavender lee there's been a change of plan which has meant that kira has gone to the laundrette by herself so we've pretty much run out of water our water rarely runs out i think we've got a pretty big tank i don't actually know how many liters we have so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go on a mission to just fill up some bottles and then empty them directly into the water tank let's hope they don't blow out <laughs> So I've just done, well, I'm just finishing doing the first trip. I've filled it all up with water and yeah, I'm heading my way back. I think I'm gonna get on with some work and then Kira's gonna help me with the second trip because it just took a bit longer than we thought. But yeah, it's all right. It's definitely a good bit of exercise. Back from the laundrette. Round two of filling our water tank. It was good, we've been productive. You got to the laundrette. Um, I came back after doing the first water and I've started writing a new folk song because i'm writing a like folk show this year it's so, so i've been trying to get write more in that style um but now we're gonna go do a second load of this it'll be easier to get there <laughs> run little one run i feel like a little gremlin did you have a nice time at the laundrette it's actually quite calming you were dreading it but you said it's actually what quite therapeutic think? how's it looking is it's looking good these are the cards that my my grandma who did this um because she's an artist she does lots of paintings and we're very lucky to have some of her paintings but she does cards for everyone every year very and these sweet. are all mine you've got one of yours up there haven't you yeah you she's done one that? of me she's a very sweet little card and these are my ones so this is me and some plants because i love plants this is the Lavender Lee one. So it was inspired by a perfume that my great granddad, her dad, used to wear that was like lavender scented. Mm. So that's nice, tying it in with the boat. And then this is Dorothy, one of her chickens, and <laughs> who's my favourite of her chickens because she's so full of character. So yeah, it's looking much more like our boat now, isn't so it? So cool. You happy? Yeah, now we're going to put this one up on the big blue wall. So Kira, what have we just done? Da 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 da. It looks so cool. Yay! Looks great. Oh god, the boat's a mess. Yeah, it's, it's not good. <laughs> it looks great. Yay! And see, it complements the wall well. And it's similar blues in the painting as well, babe. Yeah. That's all worked really well. We the shoes. <laughs> Honestly. The don't, chaos. Just don't look anywhere else. Thank you. 
morning. We just wanted to explain the last two things that we don't particularly enjoy about boat life. Point number four, solar is seasonal. So as amazing as obviously having solar panels are, um, and I still can't quite get my head around how they work, but <laughs> yes, as impressive as solar panels are and as useful as they are, um, they are obviously a lot more beneficial depending on the time of year. So obviously in the summer, spring and autumn, we can get by just with our solar panels and we can have our fridge on all the time and it's not a problem. However, in the winter when the clocks change, um, it can be really, really hard to run anything, uh, like a fridge, for example, we have to run our engine all the time. And obviously when I'm working- Especially uh, with your piano and your work setup, yeah. obviously that draws a lot of power. So. Yeah, exactly. Our electrical consumption is quite high. So I have to manage that around the battery setup and also make sure that we're running the engine. I don't tend to be able to do work as late into the evenings as I would at other times. We can definitely get by with what we have. Mm. We're very lucky that we got the, yeah, even the have, stuff that we had yeah, with the boat. Definitely. Um, and the final thing that we don't enjoy about living on an arrow boat is the boat anxiety. I think we both have quite a tendency to have anxiety anyway. To worry. It's just a different feeling to being in a house. Mm. And although your house obviously can be broken into, burnt down, burnt or, down whatever. or flood, whatever, it's just something a bit different about the fact that someone can just kind of like step onto your boat mm. whenever they want. You they know. can just take things off your roof and it's just a bit like, ugh. I definitely struggled with sleep very early on when we were on the boat because I'd hear noises and you kind of don't know when you first start out which are the normal boat noises. We didn't get much sleep. We were sort of kind of up and down in the night quite a lot being like, oh, is that a normal noise? Is that, someone on, the boat? Is that yeah. someone on the boat? Living on the boat is noisier because you've got things that can drop on the roof, you've got people walking past, you've got animals that could come up onto the boat and, you know, walk about at night. If you're a worrier, then it definitely can feed into like, oh my god, what was that? What was that noise? I think I'm definitely feeling a bit more anxious going into London. We're trying I mean, to do a couple of things to increase our security measures, Yeah, aren't we? we're in the midst of trying to set up a security camera. So, yeah, I think we're getting used to it, but boat anxiety is still very much mm. there and you're going to feel safer in certain areas than others. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, thank you so much to everyone who has bought us a coffee this week. We're a bit overwhelmed by how yeah. kind everyone's been it's really. Been so generous. We can't believe it. It's been so lovely. So yes, the link for that is below as usual. Again, absolutely no obligation to do that, but is there a if you want to do it. Second of all, we've had loads of questions about my music. Uh, so I write all the music and sing all the songs that are in the video and people have been very kind about it. If you're interested, my music's on Spotify, I think Apple Music, all of the regular streaming platforms. I think I'm going to start a band camp and also at some point I've got some like physical EPs that I might start putting up on here if people are interested but yeah people have been so sweet so thank you so much for being so lovely about the music it's been a great joy to share it and make it a part of the videos that we're making yeah definitely and lastly if you enjoy our content you can follow us on instagram at izzy and kira for more boaty adventures Thanks for watching this week's video and for keeping us company as we painted the saloon. It's so nice to see our boat slowly coming together. If you enjoyed, we upload a video every weekend, so don't forget to like and subscribe for more boat life adventures. Bye!